people will think it's bizarre if I don't talk to you about V for Vendetta. It's probably a lot of non-comic readers' first graphic novel. That and Watchmen. How do you feel about a lot of the things that were told in the story back in 1982? I'm particularly talking about the whole surveillance culture talked about in V. You know, back then when I was reading it, it was, you know, part of a futuristic story. Uh, and it seemed a little far-fetched. But now it seems quaint and a bit understated. Britain has the biggest surveillance apparatus of any country in the world. With more CCTV per head than anywhere else on the planet. How do you feel about V becoming such a huge cultural and political icon? Uh, well, I think it's fantastic. And I, I, I mean, the, the great thing about, um, especially from the movie, is that the mask has become a symbol of political protest. I think that's terrific. You know, I've, uh, people are always sending me um, cuttings and things from the internet about a, a, a group who's protesting against one thing or other, who are wearing um, bee masks. Um, and I think that's terrific. That's kind of like, because I mean, I think that's the first time since uh, Che Guevara that an actual figure, uh, a face or an icon has been used as a sort of symbol of, of rebellion against uh, some kind of tyranny or some perceived tyranny. And uh, I think that's really great. Um, and the whole thing about the, uh, I mean, there are so few really solid political statements made, um, sociological, cultural statements made in, in, in sequential art uh, or any graphic novels. So I think it's great that, that, that the is sort of like uh, stood up and, uh, and pushed that forward. And uh, I think they did a great job with the movie too. I mean, a lot of people asked me what I thought of the movie. Um, but the movie is, you know, the solid core of the movie is the same as the book, even though there were lots of other changes. And I think it's great what's happened with, with Vendetta. I think it's uh, terrific and I'm uh, very proud to have been a part of it. Well, I, I, I have issues with the, with the printing of the colour on, uh, on the, the episodic ones, on the, you know, with the single issues. And I also had issues with the, with the, with the colour as it was printed in the graphic novel. So, you know, I have no real preference. Um, the thing I miss about the single issues is the, the bridging pages. Between chapters in the single issues, there were these bridging pages which I, I, I worked at, and they've never been published. Um, I thought they might be collected together in the graphic novel, but they, they've never been published, and uh, I feel kind of sad about that because they, uh, you know, you know, they, they were part of the initial reading experience, but it's a small loss, but, uh, I, and I do appreciate um, a lot of people who's, who read the original black and white edition, they have a great um, uh, fondness for that and uh, they can't get to grips with the colour at all. You know, it's like they, there's a lot of people say to me, oh, it really should be in black and white, I prefer the whole thing in black and white. And you can get it in black and white in an Italian edition, about th I think there are about three Italian editions in black and white, there's one German edition in black and white, um, there's no English edition black and white, but uh, I mean the reason why we did it in black and white to begin with was because uh, that's all the money that the editor had, the publisher didn't, didn't have money to publish uh, in, in colour, so, so it was initially tailored for black and white, but I think that at the end of the day the colourists of the, um, if we, you know, uh, if we for a moment forget the printing of the colours, the colourists of, uh, of the Siobhan Dodds and Steve Whittaker did a fantastic job and um, you know I think that, that they, they've only enhanced the, uh, the, the series for people who aren't familiar with the black and white. There seems to be a lot of political apathy at the moment. Beautiful Vendetta was a very political book. Research shows this is one of the least political generations we've had. Even though there's a lot of things happening in the world that are quite serious, apart from the usual suspects, the activists, etc, etc. 
um, people don't seem to care. Maybe this is a UK thing. In Greece, they had the riots recently. Why is this? Yeah, I think it's a, it's a very interesting question. I, I haven't got a real clue to it myself. I think that people are very, are very happy and uh, more interested in their computers than actually getting out on the streets and doing something. I mean, uh, I mean, for all, for all I know, maybe there's some sort of like lots of uh, sort of like a kind of interior um, uh, protest, uh, a tide of protest happening through the internet. Um, I don't know. I, I mean, it's, I, I think people are quite, uh, despite political problems, in this country, there's nothing that actually is affecting the people on the street. I mean, the civil liberties thing is, is an issue. Um, some of the laws they're trying to bring in um, to, to keep people under custody for longer periods, but nothing that actually really affects the people themselves. I mean, the last time we had something like, uh, you know, that really galvanized the crowd here was the poll tax riots, I think. That's the, that's the last time anybody came out on the streets. Um, um, so I think, you know, I think that we, we would react or, or some section of the population would react um, if there was something that threatened society as a whole. But I think there's nothing that people have to protest about. 